Shritika Kasturi Rangan has been learning Bharatanatyam from Ambika Akka for the last three decades. She considers herself extremely lucky to have been guided and mentored by Ambika Akka. She has done her PhD in organizational behavior from IIT Madras and is currently working with cognizant technology solutions in the area of leadership development. She has been running Sri Kalaranga Dance School for the last 14 years. I'd like to share my personal experience uh, under this topic, character depiction in Natya. So I'd like to present uh, two uh, of our productions, Skanda and Krishna, two things that we did recently. Um, and um, to start with, even the theme of what we want to do is, is, uh, can be quite challenging. I was toying with the idea of doing a play on Shakespeare, All the World's a Stage versus Skanda. So for some reason, I think Skanda decided to choose us with the speed, intensity, the uh, work, the stories, the storyboard, and uh, the lyrics, the music, the verse, everything just fell in place too soon. I said, okay, Shakespeare can wait for some more time. So, um, and I also listened to Shardaka's uh, lecture on this topic and there, there was an element of uh, no physical, tangible uh, being need not be there. Even without physicality of that character, you can still present that character. So, um, in this particular picture, it is about Skanda. Um, can you just click the slide? This is Skanda where energy is there and it was more abstract for us. The Lots of uh, moments in Skanda was an abstract moment, but the energy was there. And the next uh, slide is about uh, Krishna, where this is baby Krishna in Brindavan, but baby Krishna physically is not present, but the energy was there. So when I was just contemplating this, I felt strongly co convinced that all of these productions with every detail are already existing. It's just waiting for the right time and moment to unravel itself to us. It's not as if we are doing anything. So that's why when I was reflecting on this topic, character depiction in Natya, the energies was like a central theme. The culmination of energy was what I thought represented the character the most, the best way. So um, when I was then uh, laying conscious thought on what energies I'm referring to, it's a function of multiple energies. Energies of the protagonist, the main character, Energies from other roles, interaction energies, what are others looking at this person as, even from the psychological domain, right? If you see, when I look at someone with great respect, then that person commands respect. When I look at someone with great love, right, then that person uh, automatically draws you because of love. So those interaction energies, energies from the director itself. So if I have to put up a character, be it Skanda, a common character, all of us know, it will be very different from what Ambika Akka might want to do. She said it on stage also. So it is about that particular director's energy. Energies of the performing artist, I think first Abhirami was also mentioning about the dancers themselves. However, there I'd like to believe that dancers should overcome that particular energy that they have and immediately get into the character's energy. Hopefully it's a long journey. Um, we'll figure that out soon. Energies of stage support artists as well, the props, the lights and all of that. Then energies of the audience, whether you do it at a temple, whether you do it in a art house, a sabha, a college, I think there is a different energy that brings or lends itself to the character. The energies of both the living and the apparent non-living. So I'll talk about it uh, in the upcoming slides. So this, of course, I said Krishna chose us in 2015, Skanda chose us in 2017, and both together have chosen to be here today. <laughs> so energies of the protagonist, this is like the underlying personality that we want to talk about. So Krishna, for example, uh, I'm sure all of us also agree that there is a playfulness, there is a nonchalant attitude, there is a, a sense of lightheartedness as an underlying, underlying theme for Krishna. There is laughter, there's playfulness, there's sportive uh, personality dimension. Whether he's a little Krishna, there's a lot of naughtiness, of course. And whether he's an older Krishna, the same thing, spirit seems to be the underlying base of that, the sthai bhava that Akka used to keep telling us. That remains. However, when we do character depiction, maybe it's interesting for dancers to give a little bit of variety in some context because all of us are also not all the same in all situations. In some context, maybe there is a different flavor that will surface. So in, in Krishna, when we did, uh, when Krishna fights Rukmangadan, when he takes away Rukmini, there is valor, there is bravery, there is intensity that comes up. So we g gave that uh, little twist. Uh, which gives for variety uh, in that character. But the underlying bhava continues to be all what I said. 
So if you contrast this with Skanda, then this little Skanda, the name itself came uh, like a flash, which was already there, like I said before. Um, it's from the Skanda Puranam and it clearly lays on that he, uh, Skanda's occurrence was for a purpose. It was to destroy Surapadman. So there was focus, purpose of life, intensity and all of that. So even as a child, there was a lot of um, such uh, adjectives about intensity, clarity of purpose, speed, all of that. So, and as he grow, grows up, there is the same element of uh, fears, focus and all of that that still uh, is there for Skanda. However, here the difference that we want to present, if we want to present, is, um, it looks like I, I was looking for pranks that play, uh, Skanda has played. And uh, Skanda Puranam lists some seven pranks that Skanda has played. He moves mountains, he rolls over Nandi to get, give Nandi a backache. He kind of ties Brahma's cross thread to, to his hair, so Brahma, is, Brahma really can't move. So there is a playful element to it, which we brought also because we were working with kids. We don't want to keep it so serious. So that gives like a variety on top of that character, but that's not the basic, um, that's not the dominant trait of that character, but still it, it can get uh, implemented uh, or depicted, but in a slightly different way than Krishna would do it. So that's about the protagonist, the main characters and what energies you want to say. Then this is about the interaction energies. So how do others respond to this main character? There are different examples we can uh, show. Even uh, while Skanda is, uh, Muruga is talking the Pranam Mantram to Shiva, is still a child to a parent. And similarly, Krishna, when he opens his mouth, the world he shows to Yashoda, child to the, uh, to the mother. To, the, uh, to one of the parents, but response is what makes the character even more, even different. The response of Yashoda, of course, Yashoda's character plays a large role in that, Shiva's character plays a ra large role in that, but you can't remove Krishna and Skanda from those examples. So here, for example, the center person is not Krishna. It is just one of the other playmates of Krishna. Krishna is actually on this side. And it also allows for Krishna is one of us, he's just there, he does, he's not really the, uh, f he doesn't have to always be revered, respected and in the middle, right? He's one of us, he can play with us, he'll be in the sideline, he's very happy with that role. So it kind of adds to that um, one of us kind of character that Krishna uh, is maybe made up of. Even here, like Arjuna is the hero, so to say, in that particular war scene. Krishna, of course, has made him the hero. Krishna has given the Upadesha, but when, when the war really happens, Krishna takes, just walks back and makes sure Arjuna does the game. So, Krishna is in the background uh, making things happen, but not much in the foreground in those uh, scenes. Here, of course, Krishna is playing the main role as a protector. And it also comes with ease, ease um, effortlessly you can ask him for help, with just love, I just love you, can you help me, it works for Krishna very well, right? So that, um, <laughs> you know, being able to easily ac uh, be accessible to everyone for protection and be there and help there, that kind of, that flavor comes out. Um, in Skanda, if you see, or if, if you see the production we did, the interaction energies were more of reverence, respect, awe, wonder. Wow, you're really great. You're born for this purpose. We look up to you. You have six heads right from the time you were born. So it's, it's like that, right? So the, those are the interaction energies which lend itself to that particular main protagonist character. I wish we had the scene of Yashoda, I mean, Krishna opening his mouth. We didn't do that scene, so I don't have a picture. Hopefully, we'll have that later. But this is just Shiva's response to the Pranam Mantra being narrated, uh, told by Skanda. So energies of the director. So what's the purpose? Why am I doing this? For whom am I doing this? What do I want to say? What do I don't want to say? I, I was uh, really caught with, when we were doing Skanda, there was this moment where everyone said, Arupade vidu pannalaya, valli kalthirmanam pannalaya, adilam eppidi morugar pannamuriya. And I was like, adiyum pannanama, ivladan time irukka, how can we do it, right? So many things you can say. But what you want to say, what you don't want to say. You want to keep it simple, you want to make it wide. You want to go into depth or you want to, you know, keep it variety, right? So, do you want to dilute one message by giving so many messages and make that? It's also an exciting story. But what do you want to do as a director? So, I think that's where my energy, my style, right? Uh, generally, clarity is one of my strengths. Uh, versatility and doing a hundred things at the same time is not my style. So, maybe that played into the uh, way in which we envisioned the character and uh, that's how that's how I kept to one single purpose 
simple yeah he was born to destroy sura padman wherever possible if it lends itself i'll include pranks and all of that but otherwise i won't so that's what happened um energies of the state uh, skanda murugan has to be there for lighting otherwise how will skanda happen so murugan was there and made sure skanda got his fair share and energies of the audience i had said earlier so in in the lighting scenario yeah see, this is the sura padman destruction and the lighting there and this is the om the pranav mantra scene i think the lighting really gave itself a lot to the character and it was murugan's real energy for skanda that came and made we've done it many times but i don't think it was this impactful as a depiction of sort this is uh, the energies of both living and the non living so i would like to um, say that we thought about this a lot and we said okay for krishna what would the side stage be so here's of course the picture is not very clear but a huge graceful lovely beautiful statue of krishna majestically on the side decorated with a lot of divine uh, you know elements like algahal i mean lamps and uh, udvati and all of that and in on the other side an abstract image of a peacock and om which is how we wanted to present skanda i think that leads audience to think about how possibly subconsciously may not be consciously but subconsciously get get a sense of how this is all coming together so i thought that was adding <laughs>
Natya Rasa Lahari is a beautiful concept brought to you by Rasa Ramana Sundutti Alia. It is a coming together of different thought processes with regard to each one's practice of this great art. At the first level, young Natyacharyas and senior practitioners of different kinds of dance, different genres, different styles of dance come together to share their thought processes. <laughs> level very senior Natyacharyas come and share their own journey, the ups and downs and their deep connect with the beautiful art. If you are a good Patram, whatever you role you do, it will it'll have its spark. People will notice you. The purpose of this ballet, I would say, is to say, that self-knowledge is the purpose of Natya. The master has allowed me to experience Natya as all-inclusive, all-pervasive and being the Shiva Tattva or the Natraja Tattva in its ultimate form. Their current work and their past work is shared on this beautiful platform and it enriches everyone's life to be able to connect to our own art in a better possible manner and therefore practice it better and experience it better. It is only those who are just soaked in this ocean who can experience that ananda which is, cannot be measured in any times in any, any terms, materially or otherwise.